Raise your hand if you ever got a blood test. Raise your hand if you enjoy getting one. <laughs> but do you know the only way to diagnose protein energy malnutrition in children is through a painful blood test. Four million children die annually, and 49 million children suffer as we speak. The government and the WHO are heavily invested in solving malnutrition. When I had stumbled upon a report from WHO back in June of 2017, I felt like I had to do something. And today, I have a story for you. The story of how I, along with a friend, developed a solution to solve or hack malnutrition. But what exactly is protein energy malnutrition? Protein energy malnutrition is a form of malnutrition defined as a range of pathological, uh, pathological consequences happening due to improper protein intake. In simple terms, you get yourself malnourished when you're not taking proteins in your diet. So next time, you better munch those proteins. In amidst of my exploration in malnutrition, on a very fine evening, I stumbled upon the TED talk of Stanford professor Dr. Manu Prakash. Well, Dr. Manu Prakash is a bacha in frugal science and a guy who turns paper into diagnostic devices. How brilliant. While I was seeing the video, I had an idea that was buzzing around in my mind. And the idea was, why don't I build a painless, non-invasive, rapid, inexpensive, paper-based test to detect proteins in our blood? Well, that was it. That was the great idea. But to be really honest, I had no idea how to do it. And turns out, my life had very interesting secrets for me throughout my journey. And one of them was being that I knew the solution to the problem all along. 12 months even before I started tinkering on protein energy malnutrition. And it all starts on my first biology class of junior year. My professor taught me very interesting things on that day, but two important things what I learned that day was digestion of carbohydrates in our mouth. On the other hand, a simple colorimetric test called the starch iodine test. I'm a guy who loves to eat french fries all the time. And french fries are made of potato, which is a rich source of starch. As soon as I take a bite of the french fry, a special enzyme in my saliva, called the salivary alpha amylase, kicks in to chop down this gigantic linear molecule into small chunks, making it easier for our further digestion process. On the other hand, a starch iodine test is a simple colorimetric test where if you want to detect a substance as a carbohydrate or a sugar, you take the piece of substance and a drop of iodine, and all you do is add this to the substance. If the substance is showing a bluish-black color, that proves the substance is a carbohydrate. I had learned these two stuff 12 months before I was tinkering malnutrition. But as I was drifting back to reality from my flashback of junior year, I asked myself a very interesting question. The question that lays the foundation, the breakthrough to my entire research. The question was, what if I take the starch iodine test and combine it with saliva, the digestion? What happens? Well, I had no answer, to be honest. But fueled with excitement, I jump straight into my aunt's kitchen, grab a piece of Indian bread or roti, a bottle of iodine from my first aid kit, 
and painstakingly convincing my family members to spit out saliva for me. And trust me, it's a really painstaking job to convince someone to give out their saliva. And in the next 30 minutes, I spend chopping down the Indian bread into small pieces. And I take a drop of iodine and add to it. As Indian bread, or roti as we know, is a carbohydrate, it gives the bluish black color, straight straight from the starch iodine tests as we saw. But I started reacting saliva samples to it. For the first 30 seconds, I see nothing is happening. But within a minute, I see something miracle. That there is a unique color change in each piece of Indian bread. And I was so fascinated by the color change, and I had no reason or a scientific theory that would explain that why I'm getting a unique color change in each different sample of Indian bread. And the next day, um, at a research center, repeating all the experiments back again in scientific laboratory conditions, and post one month's work, I arrive at a grand conclusion. That is, the color change, what you see in the carbohydrate complex when reacted with the saliva, is directly proportional or equal to the amount of salivary alpha amylase, the protein, in our saliva. Simple, yet beautiful. (laughs) While this equation, which I call the equation one, was magnificent, was a wow factor, but I was nowhere near developing a painless blood test or a protein test. But I had a hypothesis. What if there was an equation that would connect the protein in our saliva, in our mouth, to the protein in our blood? While I thought that this equation could help me to make my problem a reality, then I spent the next two months in search of this beautiful equation that relates protein in saliva to protein in blood and I get nothing. But because I was in class 12 and I had nothing to do other than studying, fueled with all the energy, teenage energy I had, I decided to make the equation myself. I spent the next couple of months painstakingly convincing the authorities to grant me a bioethical clearance. But in February of 2018, I get my bioethical clearance granted. And that was like a voila moment for me. But then, with the bioethical clearance, I have 200 participants willing to give out their blood and saliva for me so that I can make this beautiful equation. I processed the samples, and I have the report of every individual saliva and blood samples I have. Then I plot the values or log the values in an Excel sheet in this particular format. In the X column, I have the values of protein in our mouth, in saliva. And in the Y column, I have the value of protein in our blood. And now, I being a guy who loves to play with computer and machine learning and artificial intelligence, I figured out that what would happen if I applied machine learning to this data set, or this file which I just had. And turns out that I developed a machine learning algorithm that would predict the amount of protein in our blood just by inputting the value of protein in our saliva. And that was my beautiful second equation in the entire process. But now, I had two equations in my hands, the equation one and the equation two. The equation one relates the color change in the roti or carbohydrate to the amount of protein in our saliva. The second equation relates the amount of protein in our saliva to the protein in our blood. And I did see a pattern, something intersection happening in two equations. And the intersection was the value of 
a myelase in our saliva. And just by connecting the two equations, you arrive at the grand solution that would help you to detect proteins just by the color change of the color, color change in the carbohydrate. And that is the equation that drives my solution. But how does my solution look in real life? Well, I have a paper strip where I house a piece of sugar and iodine reacted to it. By definition, you see a bluish black color appearance. Then I take the saliva from a participant or from a child, then I react it to the particular paper. You see a color change, but then you scan the color change with your smartphone. And in your smartphone, you get the amount of proteins in your blood in less than two minutes. And this is how you build a painless blood test. But this doesn't stop here. My solution costs just two rupees. Less than a cent. And takes less than two minutes. And it's painless. But in the whole process, we are being eco-friendly. We are not producing much of biomedical waste. The key takeaway from my journey is that if we really commit to solving hard problems in our society and trust that we will figure out a solution in our way, connecting the dots, we can solve really, really hard problems like climate change, malnutrition, energy, etc. We can create miracles for ourselves and society at large. Thank you, everyone.